Today we're doing an overview of Tainted Grail by Awakened Realms. I'm Mark Maya. Welcome to Board Game Coffee. Grail is a terrifying one to four player choose your own adventure game filled with quests and adventures that'll haunt your dreams. <laughs> I've, I've seen things I just can't unsee. Ah! <laughs> Terrible things. Now, before we get started, I'd like you to keep in mind that I'm basing this video on a pre Kickstarter prototype, not a final copy. But who knows? Maybe if I do a good job on this video, I'll get a little something in the mail. Now, there are some final components. The minis, for example, already look great, but I only got a peek into what Tainted Grail's gameplay has to offer, and I want more. Now, the final version will have prettier stuff and a lot more of it. No hand stapled do a tang rule books for you guys. Only premium quality pages and components filled with enough eerie artwork to haunt your nightmares for months to come. I haven't slept in days. The final version will also have more story and gameplay for you to uncover. But what is the story? Allow me to summarize. Way back in the day, see, there was this legendary island filled with legendary beings doing whatever it is legendary beings do. Picnicking, ultimate frisbee, vaping, you know, that kind of thing. Then one day this king shows up with a bunch of humans and wipes out all the legendary creatures, and then decides to deem this once active Hellmouth a great place to raise your kids. Now, to make sure those nasty old beings don't come back for some good old-fashioned vengeance, he put up these terrifying statues whose fires are used to keep the boogeyman at bay. Think of them as the world's biggest and scariest nightlight. Now, the thing is, see, these nightlights are starting to fade, and as any preschooler can tell you, when the lights go out, the boogeyman isn't far behind. And as you can probably guess, it's up to you to keep the lights on and keep that boogeyman under the bed. Have you ever read a choose your own adventure book? Well, Tainted Grail is kind of like one of those, but on steroids. Think Stephen King if he was put through the super soldier program for writers and then asked to keep a diary of his summer at the Amityville house. Then you'll get an idea of just what kind of nightmare you're getting yourself into. The best guy. Now, in an overview video, I don't usually throw around my opinion one way or the other, but when it comes to certain aspects of Tainted Grail, I just can't help myself, and the story is one of those aspects. When it comes to board games, I'm not a huge story kind of guy. Personally, I think that a lot of times the attempt at a story just gets in the way of the gameplay, and it doesn't help that a lot of times they're just not written that well. But that's not the case with Tainted Grail. This story is awesome. The first time I played this game solo, it pulled me right in. I wanted to know what was going to happen next, and I actually cared. I felt like one of the characters living through these events, and that my choices mattered. The people I met felt real. They had their own stories, but it never felt overstated or unwelcome. And it never lost the plot. The story was always mine, and from time to time, my story would cross with theirs and I'd get a taste of this whole other world that was going on around me, with or without me. And the best part, and this is so very important, it's not overly wordy. It's not littered with a bunch of unnecessary fantastical literal jargon that is most common in a lot of fantasy settings. Maelstorm dismounted his horned diso demon and stood apathized at the base of the great Stufflecork, homestead of the fabled Lincoln Toss tribe? Since the year of Tethercorn, 186 ID, during the time of the Forsworn. And thank the mighty Graggle Corp, it's nothing like that. Yeah, sure, there's a lot to read in Tainted Grail, but it's an easy read because it's so well written. And you only read the parts that you trigger, and so far all the parts that I've triggered have been really freaking cool, if not a little terrifying. Ah! Gameplay in Tainted Grail consists of exploring new lands, uncovering new stories to interact with, card battles, diplomatic debates, gathering resources, completing quests, and earning cool loot that'll help you along the way. 
And as you would expect from a game filled with adventure and exploration, you'll earn yourself some XP along the way to customize your character's attributes and unlock new trade abilities. You'll also earn money to buy cool new weapons, armor, and other useful items. As you might have noticed, almost everything is tracked on your individual character boards, which are nice to use due to their inset tracker holders. Let's take a tour, shall we? These are your attributes, which improve by spending experience points. And if you improve any attribute enough, you'll unlock some cool new abilities which are placed here. Experience points you've earned but have yet to spend are stored here, along with your magic, reputation, wealth, and food. And your energy, health, and terror levels are tracked here for easy reference. Oh, and any innate character benefits and handicaps are listed here. So that's it for your character board, but that's not it for your character. There's also this little sheet. You see, as you encounter certain events along your travels, you'll learn a lot of new information, and be exposed to things that will have long-lasting impact on your character's story. And whether it be your grandma's secret recipe for chocolate chip cookies, or an unfortunate run-in with an ex-girlfriend who's just informed you that she has the herp and so do you, it's all recorded here on this checklist of life-changing events and regrettable decisions. Certain parts of the story will change based on experiences indicated in your checklist, but you won't know how until you're in it. And how do you get in it? How does one exactly get wrapped up in these delightfully horrible stories? Well, you explore, of course. Every location on the table has a story on its opposite side. And all you gotta do to trigger it is spend an energy to flip the card, find the pages in the journal that matches your location number, and follow along with the story, making choices when necessary and jumping to the corresponding passages when prompted. I actually found the whole process quite relaxing. Now, depending on the outcome of said story, you'll come out of it with some XP, get into a fight, earn some cool loot, learn some important information, or take on a quest. Really, anything is possible. I don't know what's gonna happen and neither will you. And it's that sense of mystery and curiosity that drives your want to push forward, to see what other unique encounters you can uncover. But not all these encounters will be pleasant. Actually, most of them will be quite unpleasant and absolutely terrifying. Ah! I mean, the sheer number of wicked people just walking around wanting to end your life is unsettling to say the least. Hence, the combat portion of the game. Now, combat in Tainted Grail utilizes a unique card play mechanic to handle its battle system. Each enemy you encounter in your travels will have their very own character card. This card will indicate how much damage this enemy deals, what steps they'll take on their turn, and how many points you need to generate in order to defeat them. This is where your combat deck comes into play. At the start of each combat, draw three cards and lay them down, linking them with these matching symbols indicated here. In this example, if you want to fight this enemy, you'll need to lay down a card that has at least one of these matching keys. But to play on any particular symbol, you'll have to make sure that your character has enough points in that attribute to use that card. So if you want to use one courage, this little boar symbol here, your character is going to need at least one courage. And remember, only one attribute key has to match. Don't worry about these ones. Once you have a card down, Play another card that matches at least one of these keys, and continue to do so until either you've laid down all the cards in your hand, you can no longer play cards that match the key, a card ability tells you to stop, or you simply don't want to play another card. After you're done laying down cards, add up how many points you've generated thus far. In this example, we've generated 7 points. Now, there are special effects on both our cards and the enemy cards that could greatly affect the battle in many different ways, but we won't get into all of that here. For this example, we'll just focus on the numbers. Compare the number of points you've generated to the enemy number. If it's equal to or more than this number, the enemy is defeated. 
at which point you earn the reward listed here. And your adventure continues as normal. But if you didn't generate enough points, let's say you generated five, then you wouldn't have enough to defeat this enemy. Which means they're still standing and now it's their turn to fight back. But what is it they do exactly? Well, that's simple. If the number we generated was five, then in the case of this enemy, they would attack us for two damage and counter our last card. But as mentioned earlier, we won't be going into card abilities for this video. Once that's done, assuming you're not already dead, draw three more cards, take another turn, and continue to build on your number. Repeat this back and forth process until either you generate enough points to defeat the enemy, or they beat you within an inch of your life, tear the flesh off your bones, and devour your soul through a bendy straw. Hey baby, I brought you a drink with a bendy straw, just how you like it. What the f Okay, we're back. There was some uh, technical difficulties. Now, where was I? Ah, right, combat. Some combat encounters will trigger a guardian, one of these big nasties here. Now, the difference between your run-of-the-mill encounter and bumping up against one of these guys is that these bad boys stay on the map. They also have their own move phase at the start of the day, and if they happen to move into your location, there's gonna be a fight. And if that happens, you might be in trouble because these guys are tough. Other than combat-related encounters, players will also encounter diplomacy encounters. Now, diplomacy encounters work a lot like battles, except players pull from a separate diplomacy deck. This time, instead of trying to reach a target number, players link cards to match these symbols and move this token up this colorful little track, while the enemies will be doing their best to move it down the track. Kind of like a political tug of war. You're a poopoo head. No, you're a poopoo head. Well, you have stinky feet. Well, you have a big head. Too far. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, it was just, it was just for the thing. It was, baby. If you end a diplomacy encounter by passing up through the green, you win. But if the enemy pushes you down through the red, you're dead. Okay, not every encounter ends in your death, but who can resist a good ride? Now, I want to take a second to touch back on the exploring portion of Tainted Grail. You see these things here? These are the Menhire, the scary nightlights I was talking about earlier. As you explore the world, you reveal new parts of the map, like so. But you can only uncover parts that are within range of one of these big scary nightlights. So if you want to move beyond these nine location cards, you're going to need to turn on some more lights. And to do that, you're going to have to find yourself another Menhire. Lucky for you, all Menhire locations are marked with this icon. So, once you reach a Menhire, you'll have to perform the necessary ritual to activate it before you can lay down any new locations. After you've performed the ritual and activated this Menhire, you're free to explore these newly revealed areas. Now, if one of these Menhires ever goes out, then the areas surrounding it fall into darkness. And well, that's when things start going really bad. So it's in your best interest to stay near an active Menhire, if you want to continue living. And speaking of living, don't forget to eat, because if you don't, we will starve to death. Eating takes place in the evening, a uh, midnight snack, if you will. I'm an Oreo man myself. And like any other little good girls and boys, every character has a strict bedtime routine to follow. And if they don't, Santa won't leave them any presents under the tree. First thing you'll have to do when the day is over is eat. Once that's done, reset your energy, heal your character for one health, and lose one terror. Now that's all fine and dandy if you have food, but if you don't have food, then you've got bigger problems than just being hangry. You see, if you're all out of snacks when bedtime comes, you lose health instead of gaining it. And that's gonna happen every night until you make it a priority to pick up some groceries. Just like Mama Maya used to say, eat up or die. But regardless, food or not, you will eventually fall asleep. When you sleep in Tainted Grail, the story continues through your dreams. If a location has one of these symbols on it, you'll have a dream when you spend the night there. But if your terror level is here in this going insane area, your dreams become nightmares. 
Now, I've never read any of the nightmares because I've never had my terror level that high. And frankly, I'm afraid to. But dreams are more than just little stories to pass the time. They'll give you useful tips that will guide you through your adventure. But they are still dreams, so you're going to have to interpret what they mean. Anyways, now that you've had your dream, it's time to run through your daytime routine. First thing you're going to do when you wake up is turn down the dials on your menhires. All right, did I forget to mention that uh, these guys run on a timer? No big deal, really. Just turn down the dials one step at the start of each day. And if the dial ever reaches zero, the night lights go out and all hell breaks loose. At which point there's a good chance you'll die a horrible agonizing death. No biggie. But to be on the safe side, you might want to hustle on that whole questing thing. After you turn the dials on anything that needed turning, flip over your daily event card. These cards represent random events that are happening in your environment. Maybe you'll pull a good weather card and your first travel of the day will be free. Or maybe a dense mist will roll in and you won't be able to travel at all. Or maybe some sick twisted psychopath attacks you in your sleep and ruins all the plans you had set up for the day because the day before you got screwed over by the mist and couldn't accomplish anything. Moving on. Now, when your health reaches zero in Tainted Grail, you're not necessarily dead. You're only mostly dead. And when that happens, you'll get one of these cards to remind you of the downsides of your current situation, which consists of losing all but two of your possessions, and each hit you incur from this point on could be your last. You see, when you're dying, you're going to have to flip this coin each time you take a hit. If it comes up Grail, you're safe. If it comes up Skull, you're not so safe. You're dead. But let's just say you're not dying. Let's say instead that you're scared out of your mind. If your terror level ever reaches the red zone, well, that's just you going insane. At which point, you'll get one of these cards, which informs you of the specific circumstances associated with your present condition. For one thing, you won't be regenerating any health when you rest but that's probably due to all those nightmares you'll be having. And if you ever try to travel or explore in this fragile mental state, you're gonna have to flip a coin to see if you freak out and lose your action altogether. So please, try your best not to lose your shit. It's for the best. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's more, but yeah, you get the idea. I've played Tainted Grail both solo and co-op, but I gotta admit, I think I liked solo just a little bit more. It kind of felt like curling up with a good book, except in this case, the book was a board game. And let's face it, board games are so much better than books. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee, subscribe here. Now, if you want to see more videos right now, click here. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.